hello and welcome to another affinity photo tutorial and this is an adaptation of a photoshop tutorial that i've been requested to try and do now the original photoshop tutorial is by somebody called matt k and it's called amazing clouds and so this is basically what i'm just trying to recreate now this image well, the original image was from the stock photos from Upsplash. And originally, it looks like this. And as you can see, most of the clouds are all on the right-hand side. And there's a big area up here that has no clouds at all. And I've just sort of stretched them across the image to give a better cloud covering. Now... As the Matt K said in the original Photoshop tutorial, this doesn't work with all images, especially if there's a sun in the sky, you know, a more visible sun in the sky, it doesn't really work so well. And also, you know, if there's reflections, if you sort of tinker around with the sky too much, the reflections are not going to work. So it's not a cure-all for all photographs, but it can help so yeah, there, these are things that you need to be aware of if you want to try and use this idea so let me just delete this here so we're back to the original image so obviously we have a reflection here which I'm sort of it may not work as well as it could do because the reflection gives away the fact that the sky is not quite right but it, I think it works quite well. So what you need first is the freehand selection tool, which I think by default it starts out on the rectangle marquee tool. If you just click on that and come down to the freehand selection tool. And we're going to use the freehand option, which is the first button. Now you could set the feather now, but I'm going to set it later. So I want to keep this bright yellow area down here. So I'm going to stay above that area. So I'm going to click here and drag across, come outside the picture, and stay outside the picture till I'm up to about there, let's say, come back round and join up. And it will make that selection. And now we had that selection, I'm going to click on Refine. And as you can see, that is the area that we selected. And this is where I'm going to add the feather. In the Photoshop tutorial, they said 50 pixels. So I'm going to stick with that. So I'm just going to click in here and make this 50. You could use the slider to try and get close to 50. But And then once you have your selection, you come down to Output and get the drop down menu and click as a new layer now when you do this it will make it as a new layer but it will also turn off the layer underneath but we can go back and turn that on again so just click apply so there we have our selection on a new layer and as I said this has been turned off so I can turn that back on again so you can't tell where the new layer is so if you come to the move tool and you get the bounding box and all you got to do now is come to the handle depends on which side you're working on I mean you could if your your image sky image is over here you'd use the right hand side but for me it's the left hand side and then just click and drag this across until you're happy with the positioning you could also alter the height and what have you so let me just take that away so as you can see I'm using the images own clouds to give you a bit more definition or clouds in an area where there wasn't any and you can't really tell where the join is because it's all part of the same sky and hopefully the reflection still works because that line of there is fairly similar to that so that is the original and that is the altered sky but we've got a few more clouds in the sky so to 
Okay, another version. This is an image I took of the area where I live, walking on the Naze. And as you can see, again, we have some clouds over here, not a lot up here. And what I've done is done that. So it makes it slightly more interesting, maybe. So let me just delete that. And we'll do the same thing again. So down to the freehand tool. Again, we're still on freehand rather than the other options. And start about here, come across. And then down to there. And then pick refine, feather, 50. And then output the new layer. Turn back on the original layer. Come to the move tool. And then I'm just drag this across. Now, this is something else that was pointed out in the Photoshop tutorial. Sometimes when you do this, you may sort of see the edge because the part you're dragging from is sort of lighter than the area you're dragging to but you can just keep dragging this over and you could even increase the size or you could add a layer mask or delete just to get rid of an area like that another option let me just come that way right so we've got a bit more cloud there another option you can do is choose alter the blend ranges range I should say so you select the layer that has got the just the clouds on and then click on this cog in the right here you just move this slightly off screen and then go alter the source layer range I'm just going to drag this down to the bottom like that and as you can see that is hopefully you can see that has already started to lose um, the join between the lighter blue and the darker blue because they're starting to blend into each other so I can just just alter this slightly I think it's close enough I think that's about right and then hopefully you can see you can't really tell the difference now between those two areas let me come back to that so if I bring this back in a bit Because you can, you would see more of that join there. So hopefully you can see it. You can't really see it so well. So that would be that. So that was the original image, and that is a new image. And I'm just using the clouds that I already had in the picture. I'm not trying to drag in other images and try and get them to fit. Those clouds were already there. So the 99 times out of 10, the lighting and what have you would be the same so that's it basically hopefully that answers the question the person asked me if I could do a video to you know match the Photoshop tutorial so thank you for watching and goodbye